But if the proposal is approved, it could mean the UK has to take part in EU elections there in May. And a Sky Data poll suggests many people are not keen, to say the least, on the prospect. Some people are very angry. Well, I'm joined now by uh, Gerard Batten, the UKIP leader and MEP for London, and the Labour Party MEP, Mary Honeyball. Uh, very good evening to you both. Uh, can I ask you both, first of all, if, uh, if there are elections, you're going to stand again? I've t announced today that I, I won't be. Um, I'm actually going to retire. I've been in the European Parliament for almost 20 years and I think it's time now on a personal basis to go. No other reason at all. Okay. It's a purely personal decision. But no doubt Labour will be contesting them if they do take place. But I want to ask you that, Gerard Batten. Mm. Um, you know, this talk uh, amongst a lot of Leavers saying, you know, we don't want this, we're going to boycott them. What's UKIP's well, attitude towards um, them? First of all, I was very much looking forward to retiring at all. Well, I can't because the party wants me to lead them into this election, so I'll have to. Um, we don't want to be part of the European Union, we don't want to be in the European elections, but we have to. I've known this was coming, uh, in, and as we've got closer to this time, the percentage of it happening is now up to about 99%. looks like it's going to happen. Uh, we've been preparing for this. We have uh, selected all of our candidates. We now just have to put them in position on the list. That's the final part of the selection process. We've raised uh, money, so we're going to fight a campaign. And I've been putting that play in place now for months. Okay. So we expect well, that's, it to that, that's answer, answer my question very yeah. clearly. No, no, no sense of any boycott from the UKIP side. But Mary Honeyball, I mean, is there a chance in these elections, if they take place, I keep having to say that caveat, uh, not entirely clear yet, that, that it could, in a way, it's some kind of democratic exercise, clearly, and it can show uh, the strength of feeling on either side without it being a referendum. I think that that's true, and I think you're right that it's, both of you, that it's almost certain that they will take place. In fact, the closing date for entries into it is, is the 12th of April. That was the significance of that date. So we will be having them unless something dramatic happens in between. Um, yes, I think it w obviously will reflect But just staying, just staying with you and the Labour position, I mean, you kind of want to demonstrate, I would guess, both of you, within these elections, if they take place, you know, the strength for leave, the strength for remain. And, and, and Labour's position is, is still under clear it still is it still is leave a bit <laughs> well it's always been difficult both the major parties are divided the conservatives are as divided if not more so than the Labour Party it's been a very difficult time the country's divided as well the referendum result was mm. very close and we know that Jeremy Corbyn has been having talks with Theresa May we don't as yet know what's come out of those so I think what's happening now is there's some willingness to try try and resolve things my own personal view is that whatever comes out of that it should be put to the people we should have okay a second but vote. I, I just want to stay with these European elections and it I, I mean it's supposed to in, in a sense it's easier for you Kip Gerard yeah, but we're not divided in, in on that. Your, your offering is well we didn't want to be here in the first place but mm. uh, if we are well, tell them again well you know uh, me and Jeremy Corbyn only had one thing in common for the last 40 years and that we were both wanted to leave the European Union and now he's suddenly changed his mind and let us all down which is a great pity UKIP is solidly for leave we are going to be fighting on a basis of unconditional unilateral withdrawal no compromise no surrender the people who want to leave can put their vote with UKIP it's the authentic party of Brexit the party that actually campaigned to get out of the European Union for 25 years we got the referendum you know what you're getting for when you vote for UKIP you're voting to leave when you vote Tory or Labour, you don't know what you're voting for because half of them want to stay in, the other half think they want to leave. We don't, just don't know. Mm, people, will, people will have seen everything that's been going on in the House of Commons between the, those uh, two main parties over the last few months. But, but just staying with you, Gerard Batten, I mean, your problem is, is it not, on that leave side, is that uh, your vote's going to be split because Nigel Farage and his Brexit party are going to participate. Mm. Uh, we had a by-election uh, yesterday in Wales. Where was the Brexit party candidate? Ours came third, Neil Hamilton, on 8.6 from the vote. Today we have uh, unrailed our candidates in the local elections on the 2nd of May. We have 1,420 so far. Where are the Brexit party candidates? There aren't any. Um, all this is about if indeed they fight these elections, because they have to raise the money, they have to raise the candidates. All Do you think about, it's a vanity project? That's what uh, Neil I Hamilton think what said about it. What it's about is getting Nigel Farage back in the limelight. It's about a few candidates who want to continue filling their pockets on 320 tax-free euros a day in the Parliament. 
Uh, we are a domestic political threat, and this is why the establishment okay. doesn't like us, because we just, we, we're not just about going to Brussels, we're about winning elections here. And, and Mary Honeyball, talking about uh, split votes, I mean, we've discussed the, the Labour position on Brexit. Some people might be confused by it and then decide, well, look, I mean, I'm sure that Change UK, the, the Tiggers, as they're called, will stand candidates, certainly the Liberal Democrats, and these are out-and-out out Remain parties. Well, they are. Obviously they are. And I do understand that the change party, the, the independent group, will be fielding candidates. Um, and as we know, the, the country is deeply divided. UKIP, I agree, is the Leave party, uh, unadulterated Leave. But as Gerald said, they didn't do very well in the by-election we've just had in South third. Wales. Um, they came third on a derisory share of the vote. Labour actually got 37% of the vote. You lost 50% of your vote. So, you know, it was I, very low I, turnout, and, and I'm also interested to see that there's a huge fight between the Leavers, between UKIP and Nigel Farage's party. I don't think that bodes terribly well for the Leave uh, vote. Uh, uh, and what about uh, the attitude if you uh, do get back in, Gerard Batten? And uh, I know uh, not a member of your party, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, though, saying today, and it's caused some consternation amongst um, EU ambassadors, uh, that you'd be disruptive, even more disruptive. Oh, we don't, we're not there to make the European Union work. We think it's an undemocratic, anti-democratic construction. Uh, we've voted against every piece of EU legislation that we've seen in the... Well, I've been there for but deliberately 15. gum up the works. Uh, well, by voting against it, we're saying that they have no legitimate right to pass legislation over the British people. It's unlawful, which it is under our constitution. Uh, we vote against it. We're not there to make the EU work. We are there to represent the Leave vote in Britain. Um, and I think that would actually be much higher now than it was in the referendum because Project Fear has been shown up for what it is or what it was, and I think a lot okay. more people now who voted remain out of fear would vote Leave. Uh, Mary Hannibal, I've just got to ask you, I mean, the, uh, the other big issue bubbling around uh, concerning Brexit at the moment are these talks between your party, your, your party leader and the, and the Prime Minister and their representatives. Do you think anything will come of that? Is there any way that the huge gaps between the parties can be closed to, to avoid these European elections, to, to get a deal across the line in the next few days? Well, it's not looking very encouraging, and as I said earlier, I think anything that comes out of it has to be put to a people's vote and incidentally we're, we're confident the Remain side is confident in that there's been lots of polling which shows that Remain would actually win that referendum and win it comfortably so we have no fear of elections elections are true democracy okay. and if we have another referendum and Labour lose would they want another one for the best out of three there we go. Well, uh, we'll see if there's a, a second one. Uh, Gerard Batten, uh, Mary Honeyball, uh, very good to see you both. Thank you.